Hey guys, how's it going? So back at the shop, my oil filter cutter actually showed up yesterday like I thought it was going to. Uh, I've never used one of these before, so this is going to be a first time for me. Uh, let me show you what it is. It's basically a tubing cutter. You've got a cutting wheel on that side, and you've got those roller wheels on that side. And you place it over, see that's the same filter that I marked yesterday. You place it over the top edge here, and this way you can cut it apart. This filter is heavy. Considering I only went 4,000 miles on it, it picked up a whole bunch of junk. So let me set this up onto here, and let's cut this thing open. Let's see what we got inside. And then I'm going to explain how when a filter gets plugged up, the oil still flows, but it never gets filtered anymore. Oh, and in case you're wondering, oil comes in on these outer edges here, and then comes back out into the motor through here. So the filtering happens on the outside in. <clears throat> All right, let's get this hooked up, and let's start cutting. Yeah, I'm assuming, <clears throat> assuming this is how it goes. If you look close, you can see the cutting wheel touching down there. And then you put a little bit of tension on it. And then you rotate the filter. So, like I said, this is the first time I've ever done this. So I'm sure there's other ways of doing this. I could have cut it open with a cutoff wheel. But this is actually a tool I've always wanted. Why do they make a tool like this, you might ask? Well... In certain applications, like let's say you're building engines, uh, you're, you make race engines, stuff like that, or you have a race car, you have a very, very high dollar car, people will drop the oil filter off after every run, and they're going to cut it open and take a look. And the reason for that, oh, there we go, we're dumping oil. Okay. The reason for that is you can inspect the media and see what kind of material is in there. Let me clean this up. Alright, so here we go. Now it's all cut open. I did hold it over the drain and I did drain some of it out. So here's your base plate. And this is what it obviously screws into the motor. One time I had somebody tighten up a filter so bad that only this piece remained on the motor and I wound up with an air hammer hitting these holes here just to get it to release. Here's your filter media. And as you can see, it's actually partially distorted okay see that so we're going to cut this thing open and take a look at that and here is inside of the actual casing itself now i am curious i don't know if i see anything inside of there look how nasty that is that's that's pretty dirty what i'm going to do is i'm going to pour this oil through a uh, white piece of paper just to see if there's anything stuck inside there. I had already dumped a lot of it out into the oil drain. But let me do that and let's see what we say. All right, so I got that draining through a paper. I don't have any like filters for like painting or anything. I wish I did because I would have run it through that. But here's the spring. And look at the inside base of that filter. See all the debris in there? That's all the, that junk that got loosened up, especially from having that Lucas oil treatment hold everything together. Like I said, I would never use that stuff. But anyway, the spring. What's the spring for, you might ask? Why would you need a spring inside an oil filter? Well, the oil filter sits like this on top of the spring, okay? Pressure comes in through those outside holes. Now, there's different terminology for this that I'm going to probably get wrong, but you'll understand basically what I'm trying to tell you here. So the oil comes in, and it blows past this little seal right here. Then what happens is, as it blows through that, if the pressure on the one side is greater than the pressure on the inside, hang on a second. So if the pressure on the outside is greater than the pressure on the inside, what happens is the filter does this. It pushes down. It's kind of hard for me to show you, but that's what it does. It pushes down and it unseats from this piece here. That's actually a drain back valve there. So when your filter gets plugged up and oil can't flow through it, this thing gets pushed down, and once it gets pushed down, the filter, the oil basically goes from here, right to here, and back into the motor, completely bypassing your filter. So if you leave your filter on there for too long, guess what? It's not doing anything anymore. Because you just pushed this spring down. It's a little, I forgot what the pressure setting is supposed to be. It's like, hold on a second. 
Yeah, for some reason I thought I hit record. I didn't when I started cutting this filter open. What I was going to tell you is usually those filters will push down on that spring once the pressure differential is about 20 to 30 PSI. Now, if you think about it, you can have 30 PSI in a system that only makes, let's say, 15. Because if you deadhead it, the pressure will always go up. So basically, a plugged filter is deadheading the system. I know some of you are going to complain that I should wear gloves and stuff like that. I can't stand wearing gloves. I do. Not all the time. But let's see what we got in this filter. This, this media is heavy. All right. Let me reposition the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. I have oil all over my hands. So give me a second. All right, let's see here. Look at that junk. See that? That's what broke down from that Lucas oil treatment. This is all the carbon and sludge buildup that the Lucas oil treatment was keeping inside the motor. At least, you know, I am not a scientist. I can't say that's, a, that's why it happened. But when I had that valve cover off, you saw the stickiness, and everything was attaching to the stickiness, and Lucas Oil is like a sticky syrup. And this is the end result. So this filter was plugged. No doubt in my mind, this filter was plugged. And it took 4,000 miles to do that. So, then what happened? Well, then the filter got plugged. And oil, instead of coming in through here, going through the filter and coming out here, it basically came in here, hit the backside of this plate, pushed the filter down. Now the filter wasn't seated on here anymore. It basically pulled it away. Once it pulled it away, the path of least resistance is going from these holes out this hole. Hmm. Hence me, I'm going to change the oil again in 1,500 miles. Let me see if I can find an old cheap small filter, because I want to explain something to you about that. Like a small filter what's used on like a four-cylinder car or something like that. Just, let me see if I can find one. An old one, a used one. All right, so we got a smaller filter hooked into the tool. As you can see, it's making a cut. You gotta obviously be careful in case you create a sharp edge so you don't slice your hand open when you're doing this. Now this cutter was a one of the cheaper ones on Amazon. I think it was $32, $34. If you guys are interested, I can send you the link. This one has a little bit of a beefier body to it. It's cutting, it's just a little bit beefier than I anticipated. Sometimes you can put the cups on the end and do the same thing, like rotate it. Come on, baby. The metal in this one's deflecting a bit more than the other one. There we go. All right. So, same basic design, same everything. This filter is pretty clean. There you see the spring in the bottom. 
And if you look close, let me just see if I could see it on this one. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Uh, this one you can't. What I was looking for was a witness mark for this little outcropping here. They all appear to be about the same. Had this filter gotten plugged up at all, a lot of times on the inside of the casing here, you would actually be able to see a witness mark from where this shell was popping up and down. Because, like I said, there, you can actually, this one's a little more exaggerated with the spring. See that? So when the filter gets plugged up, the fluid comes in here. Instead of hitting the, what happens is it hits the media, but the media is plugged up. So it builds a pressure, and then this thing retracts down and bypasses. So you are no longer filtering. Now, the other point of me showing you this was, if you look at the size of this filter, this filter is a baby compared to this filter. Which one do you think is going to plug up faster? This one. Especially if you're not maintained well. Obviously, whatever car this came off of was maintained well. This is a clean filter. I'm not even going to cut this open because you're not going to see anything. Ah, hey, you know what? Let's cut it open. Let's just cut it open up for giggles and grins. This way you can... Yeah, for a minute there, I thought I uh, wasn't recording and I said a bad word, so that got edited out. So anyway, I'm just cutting into this. Get this one open. I just want to show you what a clean filter looks like on a relatively low mileage oil change, like roughly three to five thousand, where somebody actually was taking care of their car. All the inner structure and the outer structure are attached to one another, aren't they? Oh, they are. Ew. Okay. Maybe a little more difficult than I thought. See, this filter, when I took it apart, had this sandwiched in the middle to keep the filter media from collapsing on itself. This one, the top and the bottom, appear to be one piece, like sandwiched together. The STP brand oil filters are a very good filter. So is the CarQuest Red. CarQuest Red is a very good filter. The one that was on my truck. But yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna have to pull the media out like this. So see, that's all one piece. That's a pretty darn good filter. Actually, now it's better than what I thought it was. But if you look, see how nice the media is? There's no debris, there's no junk on it. That's because they changed their oil regularly. That's 4,000 miles after being neglected and using Lucas oil treatment. Or any other kind of oil treatment. That's why I don't recommend it. But also, I just stretched them out. The, the filter media for my truck is actually twice as long as the other one. So anyway, just kind of interesting. Just uh, you find that uh, find that very interesting. The uh, also too, the outer shells on both of these, the STP is a much stiffer shell, as opposed to the CarQuest one. Um, but yeah, so when you buy cheaper oil filters, you get cheaper quality. This, a CarQuest red oil filter like this, that's the common filter that a lot of repair shops use. And it's kind of their, um, it's a good filter, 
but it's, it's used like it's their commercial grade filter. So anyway, just thought you'd find that interesting. If you guys want me to, I can always make a video. I can get a whole bunch of different filters and we can cut them open and we could see what the insides of them look like. If you're interested in that, let me know. But otherwise, there I'm just showing you, your filters can plug up. They get plugged up, you're bypassing your filter. So your oil filter is no longer doing anything, nothing. That filter on my truck at 4,000 miles because of all the gook and debris that was inside that motor, at 4,000 miles that filter was plugged. Plugged up. And it was being bypassed. So basically that dirty, debris, nasty gook was just getting recirculated through the motor. That's what adds to engine wear. So... I mean, the motor doesn't make any noise, so I'm hoping that it didn't do any damage to the motor. I don't think it did, but, I mean, you know, people wonder, well, how how come my engine blew up? Well, there you go. You're recirculating old nastiness through the motor. Um, in 1,500 miles, I'm going to change my oil again. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a Ford FL1A filter for it. It's The FL1A is a big, giant filter. That's used, which used to be used on the older Fords, uh, like the 302s, the 289s, the 351s. I believe even the 460s had them uh, in trucks and everything else. But it's the same pattern, the same base base uh, gasket design as what the Chrysler uses. So, And that Chrysler filter, the big Chrysler filter that I used on that, I can also use that on my minivan, which takes the smaller version. You can fit it. It's the same. You don't have to worry about depth. A lot of times depending on what you're putting it on because if the depth makes the filter hang out too low I want to make sure you don't have it in a position where it's going to get hit by something so anyway that was pretty much it i thought that was kind of interesting to see an actual filter plugged up um hang on so anyway like i was saying you get to see a filter plugged up and you know a lot of you don't realize once a filter gets plugged up it's not doing anything you still got oil pressure but the oil's not going through the filter. Also, too, on startup, when a system is dead, like not dead, but like has no pressure in it, and you start it up, and that initial surge of oil hits that filter, it's got to soak through that filter to get to the rest of the motor. So a lot of times on initial startup, that filter will actually unseat itself because the pressure differential, the pressure going into the filter, exceeds the pressure coming out of the filter, so it'll unseat it and fluid will pass through. And then it'll equalize. But once it gets plugged up, you're done for. I don't care if you got, you know, 15,000 mile oil in there. I don't care if you got a great oil filter. 4,000 miles on my own truck. There you saw it. So, something to consider. So, in 1,500 miles, we're going to be taking that one off. We're going to be cutting that filter open and taking a good look at that one. So, all right. I hope you got something out of my video. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.